Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today I have three custom planner spreads that will really have you thinking outside the box. Today I am working on three custom planner spreads for my purple tier of Patreon, and these are really going to have you kind of thinking outside the box, and I'm super excited to dive into them. So Angel asked for a spread using 49 and Market, one of my favorite new companies, so excited to do that for her. Denise is traveling to Las Vegas, and I am pumped to create a Vegas theme spread for her. And then Teresa is dreaming of hot air balloons this summer, and we are going to create a custom spread for her. I will link all of the supplies I used down below. Make sure to watch all the way through. Let me know which one of these spreads ends up being your favorite. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. All right, let's do it. All right, we are going to start out with Angel's spread. She asked for a classic vertical spread, and she asked for a specific collection from 49 and Market. All of my patrons have been loving the 49 and Market line. I've been using it in several projects, and I used it on some custom planner spreads last month and got so much great feedback. Let me know if you have used this line before. Um, you guys did let me know that this is a popular line, and then it's been a while around for a while, and I just had not heard of it for some reason. It is definitely right up my alley. So we are starting out with some background papers from the Plum Grove line from 49 and Market. I already know I'm going to need to order some more background papers. Now, this is thick cardstock. It did not fit once I had put two together. It didn't fit in my Happy Planner Punch, and then I mispunched it. I punched it incorrectly, and so then it gets... It gets messed up. I have mistakes on both sides where the little mushroom shapes are off. Now, my first thought was, um, I'm going to have to trash these papers and repunch. And then my second thought was, Angel's pretty easygoing. I think she'd prob probably be okay with it being mispunched. And then my third thought was, I can fix this, which is generally what I like to tell all of you. Um, when you're working on something and it goes wrong, a lot of times it can be fixed. And in this case, it definitely could be because all I needed to do was cover up the issues, the spots where there were issues, and then I can re-punch it again. So my whole plan for this layout was to have this very simple background and then to have lots of pieces popping out from behind where the vertical boxes would be. A lot of times I concentrate the decoration in the middle of the vertical boxes, and then sometimes I concentrate it to the edge. This one, I was mainly going for the edge. You're going to see I do have a big impact later on that comes on in the middle. Um, but I wanted to focus a lot of the ephemera pieces as if they were just popping out from behind. Almost the thought was having your planner open on top of a project that might be on your scrap table was what I was thinking. Like if you were working on a card project or a scrapbooking project or a journaling project, and you just opened up your planner on top of your table, what might it look like? And this was what I was coming up with. So you can see as I'm working, I'm putting things around the edges. I want them to not pop off from the outer edge, but from the from behind where the boxes are. So I'm constantly like placing the boxes back over the top to see where things will meet up, how it looks. And so I'm just playing, making sure as many spots are filled in as possible. And again, I say this all the time, but every time I cut off a piece, I reposition it and use it again. So it's getting pretty good. I need one more little thing to fill in up here. I think these little tickets are so fun. I love this line, the Plum Grove line from 49 Market. Like I will, I already know. I got to order another set from scrapbook.com because I love it. Um, my patrons love it. So I've been using it a lot for them and it's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it's a set I feel like it could go for the summer or the fall. It, it just has a, an interesting mix of colors. So Got my boxes on the page. I'm going to cut apart the two papers. I did cover up where the mistakes were in the punching, and now I can just re-punch those areas. So from the back, it doesn't look great, but from the front, it looks fine. So once Angel pops this into her planner, you won't know that it was ever mispunched. I wanted the days of the week at the, at the top to have a softer look, and so I decided to go with these gold foil ones from 
Hobby Lobby. They are um, the paper studio brand. Um, and I think they go really nicely. Now they don't show up a lot on camera, but I think the gold foil is nice there on the top. They're delicate. They're not in your face. And I didn't want to cover up all of the beautiful ephemera that I had put up there. And so I, you can still have the dates up there and um, Angel can still write the dates on the top, uh, the numbers of the dates, or she can find a place within the boxes to put those. Now, lastly, so I said I was going to concentrate all of the decoration on the outside. Well, I couldn't go without doing rub-ons because I think they're so cool and I'm a little bit obsessed with them right now. So I chose two rub-ons from the Plum Grove collection, these two huge splatterings of color, and I'm going to use those on the page. Rub-ons are really easy. You take off the backing. You very carefully use like a popsicle stick type situation. It's almost like a little bone folder and you rub all over. Obviously this is sped up. If part of it doesn't come off, if it's not working, put it back down and rub again. That works really well for me. And these are just going to be two big splashes of color on the main part of the spread. And then I will be able to layer boxes in on and around these to incorporate them a little bit more, but I just, I couldn't resist the splashes. I think they just look so cool. Love the junk journal feel of this whole collection and really a 49 and market in general. How pretty is that? All right, I pulled out the Jewel Tone boxes from Mojo Jojo Plans. She does such a great job of picking out so many boxes. I am not an affiliate of hers, um, but I buy her things because they are fantastic. And so these boxes, there's like a deep purple and then a deep kind of maroon color that also goes really well with this collection. So I'm just layering boxes. You can see some of them are on top of the rub-ons. That way you can still write there pretty easily. Technically, you can write on top of a rub-on, but not super well. Um, I'm also going to pull out some checklists here to add across the page just to make it as functional as possible. I don't need a lot of decoration here in the middle. I want it to be really functional um, because obviously most of the decoration is to the outside. I'm just trying to make sure I'm moving both colors around, that there's not too much purple or too much maroon, that it's kind of moving around. Um, the last thing, just a couple little butterflies because I love me some butterflies. So I find some of those in the ephemera. I'm going to find a great place for those to live over there and then get those on the page and Angel's spread is going to be done. Like I said, I think this one is fun. I think it works for summer or for the beginning of fall. This could be like an end of summer spread. It's fun, it's splashy, it's very different, um, but I am loving it and I could not leave it without a few little words. So let's add a few word fetty stickers here and there and that will wrap this one up. All right, next up is for Teresa who was dreaming of hot air balloons, which I just absolutely love. So I actually went and searched for some hot air balloon artwork. I like to look on Creative Market. I often pay, or I pay for the commercial licenses for um, pieces on Creative Market so I can use it in some different ways. But you can also pay for a personal license for the images if you plan to just use um, the artwork in your own way, like for your own personal use. But there were some repeated patterns that I used to create a fun background that I'm going to use as the main part of the page. And then for the boxes, I'm actually mounting them on this blue cardstock and using these old school scissors. Let me know if you have the patterned scissors. They were all the rage back in the 90s, um, and I still have several pairs. And so I thought giving the boxes a fun little like wavy, whimsical edge would be really cute um, against all of these hot air balloons that I'm going to use on the page. So it's just a way to add another fun touch and something that's super easy. I got all of the images from Creative Market. I sized them and... Um, put them on my Cricut and had them cut out of white sticker paper. I use a weatherproof sticker paper that's a really high quality. I use that for all the stickers that I create for my patrons and for the stickers I mail them in their happy mail um, just because I think it feels so soft and buttery. It feels like luxurious sticker paper. Um, so I used that. I have my boxes here. How cute does that little edge look? It's just something, you know, you don't even have to add crazy stickers on top of this. This has a really nice feel to it. Um, very whimsical, very fun, very summery. I, I would love to go in a hot air balloon. I actually grew up in Plano, Texas, and we used to have a really big hot air balloon festival that I don't think happens anymore there. Um, and I loved going every year and we used to chase 
we used to do hot air balloon chasing. Like when they would take off, then you would just drive in your car and try to find where they were going to land, like what field they were going to land on. So good memories, which is why I just loved the idea of the hot air balloon theme. I didn't want the boxes in this spread to dominate the spread. And so I actually went with gray boxes so that they would be much more neutral in the background because I really wanted the little scenes of the hot air balloons. Um, I did accidentally put a sticker on a little bit crooked and I honestly can't get it fixed. So it's going to be ever so slightly crooked. It happens. It happens to everyone. Um, and sometimes you can't lift the sticker. So it is what it is. And I think uh, Teresa will probably be just fine with it. Love having the double box on the weekend. That is something I do almost all of the time because I feel like a lot of times weekend plans, like a weekend to-do list is what I generally put in that double box. And those kind of span both days. You know what I mean? Like you just have things that have to get done over the weekend and whether it happens on Saturday or Sunday makes no difference. So every time I have boxes, I'm trying to layer them with different elements. I have these gorgeous kind of watercolor looking uh, hot air balloons and then the watercolor looking clouds that I think are so beautiful and whimsical and bright and fun. This is just a really cheery spread. Like it makes me really happy. I don't end up putting any words on the spread, which is very different for me. Um, so I think Teresa could probably add some if she wanted to. I just didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to dictate which direction the spread was going as far as inspirational words. Um, so we're going to go without, and I'm just going to make sure that there's some functional boxes all around. Then I'm going to add the days of the week at the top. Again, I didn't want the days of the week to dominate too much. So I actually went, I did Mojo Jojo's dated basics. And then I went with the day abbreviations, just because when you do the longer, the full day of the week, it they all get really close together and they're a little bit more impactful. And so I did um, the abbreviations there at the top. And then last but not least, let me add these little triangles. They are in this like deep magenta color, which I think is a nice pop. And these will be the bullet points on the page. And yes, I did go ahead and put a bullet point right in the middle of that cloud because you can write on top of this sticker paper. It's one of the reasons I choose the sticker paper that I do because I think you should be able to write all over your planner spread. And so I'm just going to put a few of these bullet points all around. Now the artwork that I'm using for Denise's spread is actually from Etsy. I will link it down below. I love a watercolor look. Like I love the look of watercolor stickers. Um, so we're going to go with that. And I, this scene of Las Vegas, like, are you kidding me? So stinking fun. I went for it on this spread. So I have these images that I again used my Cricut to cut out. Um, and then I'm going to use the travel sticker book from the Happy Planner um, to to just capture. I think this is going to be a little bit more sure it's a planning spread. I'm going to put a packing list, things like that. But it's also um, a place where Denise can be daydreaming about her trip to Las Vegas, planning some of the activities she would like to do, um, writing down memories and things that happen when they are there. Her trip actually spans a couple of weeks. So I left this one undated so that she could choose which week she wanted. Um, that way she can kind of make a spread that corresponds with that for her other planner spread for that next week. Um, I love that sticker. You are exactly where you need to be because vacation, we all need that. This is just a really good sticker book. The travel sticker book is great for documenting any of your travels for planning and for memory keeping purposes. I love some of the prompts that are in here. Um, and so I'm just picking a few of these stickers. I'm using my sticker guides, which I do not have in the big size. This is a big vertical. I don't have the sticker guides in a big size, but using the classic size, putting it right in the middle still allows me to kind of plan. And this is where I decided, you know what? We're going crazy on this spread. Let's do a few more wonky boxes just for fun to change things up just a bit. Once I had figured out all of the boxes I wanted to use, then I pulled out those stickers that I created and then I figured out how I would layer them together. The stickers are so fun. They're the parts of Vegas that like stick out to me. Of course, there's the gambling. The only time I've been to Vegas, I didn't do a lot of that. I just, it just wasn't my jam. But what I really liked when I went to Las Vegas was the super great food. So I definitely printed out some food stickers. I loved the entertainment. I thought it was a ton of fun. And I liked the shopping. There was some good shopping. So there was a lot of fun to be had in Las Vegas, um, even if you don't like the gambling part, which I think is um, 
so cool about that city. There's a lot going on. So I definitely included, you know, the champagne. I had the showgirls there. There's, you know, a few of the casino features, but then I definitely wanted to include um, good food because on vacation, like, am I not wrong that good food is one of the best parts of going on vacation? I absolutely love it. So I'm going to get all of these last few little stickers down and then that'll be it for Denise's custom spread, her custom Vegas spread. Let me know down below which spread did you you like the best. I will link all of the supplies that I used um, in the description box below so you can check those out if you are interested. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. We're having a great time. June kicked off planner camp over on Patreon and there's a ton of fun stuff going on. Exclusive content, fun principles, lots of themes and challenges and I think you would really enjoy joining. So it's never too late to join. Um, head over to the link down below to check out more info on Patreon and to start your seven day free trial. All right. I hope that all of you have a fabulous day and as always keep it creative.